Thank you, Honorable Minister. Uh, if you are the devil's advocate, I am the devil incarnate. I was actually going to put these questions okay. back because my, my presentation is actually on the political and design issues. And so, sir, I would like to ask you, are you really keen to do this? It carries grave political risks. And this is born from empirical evidence. So let me just describe the empirical evidence. First of all, worldwide and within states, we find these two opposing trends happening. One is globalization. Market integration, improved communication, pressure on global action, scalability with the kind of tools that you have to actually do things on the center, you get better control on standards, so why should you devolve? But on the other hand, you have the political argument for localization. In fact, in India, if you see the number of new states have been created, it is actually an expression of that political argument. There's been a demand that forget about scalability, we want to, I mean, kind of our identity has to come out. And that political demand can be actually sometimes even work adversely economically. But that is a, a political desire is greater than the desire to just get economic uh, improvement. And today, therefore, see what's happening is, on the one hand, we see a dilution of sovereignty. A large number of international conventions now exist where sovereignty has been diluted in, in anti-corruption, in global warming, in international trade. And so actually the nation state is now too big for the small things in life, like water supply, etc. And it's too small for the big things in life, local level. And this is the context in which we are all. In fact, the same thing affects Kerala, the same thing affects the Telangana, the same thing affects Karnataka. And it is in that context that you are you will be decentralizing. What you are doing, sir, is very different from what was thought of to be done by Balantra Mehta. That was a completely different era. That was Jurassic Park. You are in a completely different era and you are dealing with a very fast changing reality and you will have to deal with decentralization in this reality. So how much of the dogma should we really follow? Now, they, first of all, sir, I think we need to understand what decentralization means. There is delegation, which is just the passing down of authority. You find a few Dukhi Atmas here who have done well, but we are the same old people. We keep meeting each other all the time, but it's extremely difficult. Vijayananda and I discuss this all the time. Who will succeed us when all of us walk off into the sunset? Not very many people. There are few bright spots now, but not very many people are interested. They are all interested in the, in yes, the yes. nice... Um, Sir, the youngest among the bureaucracy yeah. is about, he's 55. He's 55. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the old problem that we really have in civil society, which we one would have thought is basically rights-based and would support grassroots level governance, is not really being there. And I think it's because civil society is actually an extension arm of the government. A lot of them work as government contractors. NGOs get funding from the government to run government programs. They are outsourced agents. So these are the panchayats as their competitors and they would prefer to deal with the deconcentrated space. Aruna Roy will agitate against the panchayat. I have never seen Aruna Roy agitate against a district collector. Because she knows that the district collector cannot be annoyed. Uh, that would make her uh, presence in the district pretty uncomfortable. So the power structures are not changed. So the relationship with the bureaucracy remains fairly the same even for uh, civil society. Now, if you look at how decentralization has happened, dictators have decentralized pretty well, even in our uh, vicinity. Pakistan in 19, um, yes. after Liaquat Khan was uh, assassinated, uh, Ayub Khan came to power, 